Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I broke something. A couple years back, I bought a whole toolbox full of stuff on Facebook Marketplace, and this indicator was in there, and it had this back on it, and it was screwed into this magnetic base. And I'm guessing that this piece and this piece probably came together, and it looks like this is probably like kind of a universal fit to go on the back of an indicator to replace, you know, what you normally have, uh, just the plate on the back of the indicator. And what I broke here is this guy is cracked because this isn't straight. It's never been straight, or at least it's never been straight since I owned it. If I thread this on here and you watch, get it started. See it wobble? So when you try and use this, so this is, this is magnetic over here. Normally the indicator would be mounted to the back of this, so it'd be together like this and you put it on a lathe bed or something else, a milling machine, or wherever you're trying to you know, measure with an indicator as you're moving, um, and it measures it. The problem is it would end up at like a funky angle like this, so you, then you have, you know, you're not straight with what you're trying to measure, so you'd have a parallax error. Well, I was actually using this on the lathe, and that was bothering me because I, wanted to, I needed to move a specific uh, distance. And I tried to bend it back. I, I, I thought that maybe what was going on here was that this brass insert piece uh, just needed to shift in there, that it wasn't flat. Turns out it's actually, it didn't move, not number one. And number two, it is flat in the back. It's totally flat back here. It's like, it's like they machined the, the flat faces uh, at an angle to the threads. Uh, here, I'll thread this on here again. And if you watch... It's a little, it is hard to see. It's like the, this back here, the threads are staying straight, obviously, because I'm holding this part. Um, but the whole plate, as well as the flat part of the brass piece, uh, appear to be like rotating, you know, out of sync with those threads. So it's probably always been like that, and that's probably why right there. And yeah, I could buy a new one of these, but uh, I think we can fix this. Well, I, I don't think we can fix it. I mean, this piece is obviously uh, broken, but I think we can just draw this piece up, make a new one, and then figure out uh, how we're gonna get that threaded onto the back, uh, or how we're gonna get, you know, once this is mounted onto the indicator, how we're gonna get this threaded onto here in a secure fashion, because we don't want this to break loose. Uh, so if, uh, if that thread breaks loose from this magnetic piece, that means this indicator is falling on the floor and it's garbage. These things are, if I get it to focus in there, there are a whole bunch of really small precision parts in there and generally a shock like that just means that these things are garbage. So let's, uh, let's see if we can recreate this piece. I don't know that we need all of these holes. Again, I, I, think, I, I think these two pieces originally came together and I think this is probably like a universal fit. So it's got, I noticed it's got four holes in a standard pattern and then it's got two additional holes. So I think we only need, actually the indicator has an extra hole as well. Does that line up? Yeah, that does line up. Um, so five of them line up. Uh, that one weird one does actually line up down there at the bottom. I don't know that there's any value to that Really, and I, I already took this apart. I, I unscrewed this. It only there's only four screws, so I don't think it's relevant that that one actually does line up. In fact, yeah, that's not even a threaded hole. It's like there's something in there, like a piece of plastic or something. And I don't know if there's any way to get this other one to line up. I can't think of any any combination that would line up the back of the plate with the other hole. Nor do we need it. I mean, I think we only need these four holes. I guess we'll, we'll probably draw them all in there just to duplicate this. There's probably some reason why they have those extra holes. My guess is that other brands of indicators probably have a different hole pattern. Maybe, does that work out to be, oh yeah. So that works out to be, okay. So if you use that hole, that hole, and that hole, I think that would be a three hole pattern. You grab some other indicators and just see. Now I'm curious. Okay, so I've got three other indicators 
And they all use a four hole pattern. This one's actually not quite the right size, but I was just curious. This one's a uh, Toyo, And these are just, uh, I think just generic. And it looks like this is the same size as this. So that would fit with the four hole pattern on either one of these. It's not gonna fit that one because it's a different size. Although we could actually make, if we did wanna use this one uh, with this magnetic base, uh, we could make a different plate for it that also had uh, the threaded part to go into this. That's something to think about. But for now, what I want to do is just get this replaced because I do use this indicator fairly regularly. And now that it is cracked, um, it's, not, it's not usable like that. So let's go draw this up. All right, and here is the design that I came up with for this. And I did end up drawing all of the holes. Uh, I, I thought about just doing the four hole pattern because that's probably all we're gonna need. But now that I understand that, you know, really that just the other, the additional ones give us that three hole pattern, I can so, sort of see the triangle here. It might be nice, if, you know, just in case I, I do wanna use this in the future on an indicator uh, that does have uh, three holes instead of four. So, uh, I left all these dimensions just a little bit big because I expect these to close up a little bit. I've found that to be the case whether I use the Bamboo Labs printer or the uh, the Prusa Mark III. Uh, small holes like this always end up a little tighter than the actual dimension that you draw. And I did leave a small relief here. This will actually be the bottom. So there's going to need to be supports underneath these guys uh, because on this side I have this sort of mystery recess here. And uh, I'll leave it to you guys down in the comments to guess how we're going to finish this off next week, uh, just based on the design. That's all I'm going to tell you guys. Uh, but this is the inside. This will be the inside face. So this needs to print. Uh, it needs to print in this orientation because I don't want to have supports here. It's, I think it's really important that this face here uh, be very flat and parallel with this face uh, down here. It's selecting the edge too, but I mean this larger face down here. So. All right, let's, uh, let's slice this up and print it out. All right, and our print is done. And you can see we, we still have the support pieces in here to knock out, but I don't think they're gonna be too hard to knock out because we have through holes. So we should just be able to knock those out with a punch. Let's, let's give that a try. We put these away before we break something. All right, let's see if we line up. Okay, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but I can see all the screw holes through those holes. So I think that is a good start. Let's, uh, let's try the screws. These screws are so small. I don't think the camera does justice to how small these guys are. These are the ones that when you drop them, you never find them again. The screwdriver might be too big. Yeah, the screwdriver's the wrong size. I think I did get that one started. Two and it still looks like we're lined up. All right, I found an end mill here that's about the same diameter as the first part of the hole and I'm just kind of rotating it in here. I think what was going on is there's just some crap in there from the supports. These holes are so small, it's actually, it's really hard to see. 
But as I spin this, I can kind of feel some crap getting cut. I don't want to torque these too tight. Yeah, they're all dropped way below the surface. We're good. All right, I think that is as far as we can take this because there's no way to thread it on there yet. Uh, like I said, let me know down in the comments uh, what you think that we're going to do uh, next week to, to finish this out because obviously it's not done yet, but uh, our, our overall back is, uh, is done. So, all right, let's go talk about uh, the East Coast Rep Rap Festival. So the first thing here is a printer that is uh, Core XY, but it uh, doesn't have any belts. It's using magnetic levitation. This is the Magneto X linear motor uh, 3D printer by Piopoli. And it's not available for sale yet. I think they have like a Kickstarter going. So I should mention, I don't have any affiliation with any of these companies. Uh, you know, the, there's stuff that I'm showing here, at least yet. Um, there is a couple that I expressed an interest in. And this is one of them. This thing's really interesting. Now, also notice it's not actually printing anything. I don't know if that's because it can't yet or if just they chose not to. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you're really interested in seeing this, I might try and pick one of these up. Uh, it checks two boxes. It's really interesting because it's, well, it's magnetic levitation and it's also large form factor. So let me know what you think. So, you know, one of the things that I, I was a little bit disappointed about just in general at East Coast Rep Rap was just the amount of trinkets. You know, you guys know I'm not really into the just, you know, cool looking stuff. I mean, I'll admit there was some neat stuff there, but there was just so much stuff that was just like trinkets, just, you know, multicolored stuff for the sake of being multicolored. Uh, I did get to meet a bunch of people. You could see uh, Joseph Prusa there and uh, 3D Printing Nerd. Uh, this is in the uh, the Prusa booth. Uh, they actually gave away a Mark IV printer. In fact, the guy that uh, that won it, they told him uh, it was in the middle of a print. He's, they they were like, "Yeah, go ahead, just unplug it, take it. It's uh, it's yours." And I think he did. He ultimately ended up uh, just unplugging it and uh, carrying it off with him. Um, but I feel like he had a missed opportunity in having uh, Joseph Prusa actually, you know, sign it. Uh, maybe he did after I left. Uh, I had two tickets to win it, and uh, I didn't win it, or I'd probably be bragging about it. So. Uh, in their booth, you know, they had a whole bunch of multicolored stuff, but the thing that was the most interesting was actually seeing the, the Prusa XL in person. Uh, I, unfortunately, I, I didn't get a long enough video here to show the tool head change, but it switches between tool heads like super fast. It's mesmerizing to stand there and watch it. Uh, this was a conductive filament. This was pretty interesting. I tried to get a sample of this, but they were out of it. I did fool around just moving the, uh, the jumper wires around and um, it was pretty cool. Uh, this is something that, you know, th so this is my first East Coast Rep Rap Festival that I'd, I'd been to. I wasn't aware of like any of the, the competitions or stuff that they had. Apparently this is a, like a, a thing that they do every year is these death bots and, or death racers, I think it was called. And uh, these were really cool to watch. I would be potentially interested in building one of these next year if I go again. And I'd love it if a couple of you guys joined me in that. Maybe we could get kind of a competition going. Uh, these were fun to watch, and, you know, while, yeah, I mean, you know, they're not uh, totally functionally practical, they're, they're toys, uh, I like the idea of the engineering challenge in building one of these and trying to think through all the things that could fail. Like, for example, the ones with tracks, uh, the tracks kept getting, like, knocked and stuck, and the ones with wheels consistently did a whole lot better. They also had, like, a top fuel dragster thing, I don't have any footage of that, but, uh, the thing that was interesting with that is it seemed like the teams that had figured out how to get uh, 3D printed tires that had good traction on this concrete did really well. And, and I like those engineering challenges. So this is something I might check out more next year. And before the show wrapped, I did find there was a booth that had the new Bamboo Lab A1. Uh, you know, it's not a machine for me. I think everyone was expecting an XL machine from them and instead they dropped the A1. I get it. It's market share that they don't have uh, today, but still a little disappointed. It was a neat machine to see. It is. It's, it's, it's so clear that this is a bunch of ex-DJI guys. I mean, it's, it's very much like a DJI type product, but I thought I'd throw that, that footage in there. Uh, this is a company that I did manage to talk to and actually left the, the show with something. So this is like a tug of war thing here and what you can't really see too well is that the, uh, the guy in the black t-shirt there, ahead of him is two pieces, two 3D printed parts that are uh, glued together. This is gloop. 
um, the, the, this company. They, they, uh, they had this whole industrial robot out there to show off their, their product. And it worked. I mean, it was pretty cool. These guys were busy all day. That guy's name is Andrew there in the, uh, the white lab coat. And the idea was to try and pull apart these two pieces of, I think it was PLA, uh, glued together with their, their Gloop product. And I think uh, these guys here pulled almost 700 pounds, I think, on this line, and it stayed together. And it was like a one inch by one inch contact patch. Like, I, I was impressed by this. I gave up on trying to glue parts together way back when I got into the hobby and everyone said, I'll use super glue. It, it works fine. It, it doesn't. Uh, you can, yeah, I mean, the parts kind of stick together, but you can pull them apart uh, pretty easy. So, uh, I talked to these guys. They actually gave me a sample of the product to, to try. I told them I wanted to feature it in the channel. So let me know down in the comments below if you guys have any ideas for how we could test that. Uh, I asked them what the actual strength was, like per square inch, and they couldn't tell me. So that might be an option to test that as well. But I, I, I'm at least interested in trying that product here uh, on the channel. And that's Gloop. Again, I'll, I'll link all these guys down below. Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's video. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments if you haven't already uh, how you think we're going to finish this out and solve this next week. And uh, if this is your first time on the channel, we do a new functional print every single week. Yeah, it's often something like this that just fixes or improves the functionality of something that I've got out here in the shop, uh, in the house, or outside. Uh, sometimes we also do just you know totally uh, clean sheet from scratch designs. If you're into that sort of thing, hit that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.